everybody, welcome back to another day of Art Basel in Hong Kong. And today again we have the Kobo Challenge here at Art Basel Hong Kong. And we are very honored today to have as our very elegant guest, Mr. Simon de Bury. Welcome so much here. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, you pronounced it brilliantly. Uh, it's very <laughs> difficult to pronounce it. You did it very well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm very happy to be here uh, Thank you. at Art Basel Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us. And today, uh, we would like to start with a little um, introduction because um, you were uh, the owner of the Maison of uh, the Ocean House, uh, Philippe de Bruy, and now you are also engaging in many, many different activities. Would you like to tell us a little bit? Yes, I spent a substantial part of my life in the auction world. Uh, I was first 16 years at Sotheby's. I was uh, chief auctioneer worldwide and uh, chairman of Sotheby's Europe. And then I was 12 years owner of Philips de Puri, and which a company which I've sold uh, at the end of 2012. And now uh, I have a company with Michaela de Puri together called De Puri de Puri, and we uh, curate exhibitions, we build collections, uh, we uh, develop concepts, we curate shows. And so uh, we, then I have another company called De Puri, which is a website on which we do uh, auctions, both benefit and commercial auctions. Uh, we had, for instance, the Amphar auction in Hong Kong uh, on the uh, 19th was on our website. Uh, we prepare the Amphar auction in Cannes during the film festival and the Leonardo DiCaprio auction in Saint-Tropez this summer in, Saint so, in, in France. in two months in That's Cannes. right, yes. Wow. Everything's ready, almost? No, uh, <laughs> everything gets ready at the last minute. Yeah. So this is uh, not your first time at Hong Kong Art Basel. This is the third edition, but you were here before. Yes, I had the uh, privilege of coming here for every edition of uh, Art Basel Hong Kong. Of course. And today is the second day. Um, how do you feel of the atmosphere? How, how is the market, the art market? Is it changing? Is it doing well? Or, or how, how, what is your general impression? My general impression is excellent. I like the quality of the fair. I think it's a very good quality. Uh, uh, many temptations in terms of works that one wants to buy. Uh, I love being in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a place where the minute you get here, you are energized, you, you feel uh, positive, want to do lots of things, and that like is in contagious. New York? Uh, yes, uh, New York has also an energy like mm. that where you, you cannot be lazy in Hong Kong, <laughs> you cannot be lazy in New York. How do you feel like it's uh, in general the art market is it affected a little bit by the um, the financial uh, problems or kind of? Um I, I think that the art market continues to be very healthy and very good. In fact, uh, given all the turmoil we have seen in the uh, economic uh, climate generally, and uh, the art market overall uh, is developing really in a in a healthy, good way. There are moments when it is a little more slow or where it slows down a little bit. But if you analyze the art market, and you can do so statistically from 1850 onwards, because since the 1850s, you have enough documentary evidence on the prices that people pay for artworks. So if you follow the market from 1850 up to the current day, you see that overall it has always gone up. There are moments every now and then when it slows down a bit, but then it continues to go up for a very simple reason. There is only a finite number of great art available and you have uh, always a uh, climbing uh, number of people who want to buy it. So you study like, over 160 years of the art market, the history of art market. I think it's interesting to see the history of the art market, to follow it. What does change is, of course, taste. Taste always evolves. So what we today regard as being very important, mm. in 50 years from now, surely taste will have changed and evolved. And that has a strong influence on the art market as well. So it's always important to look at the art market with a, a, a point of view from the art history. It's the more concrete thing. You have to take many things into account. First of all, uh, buying art is something emotional. Mm. Uh, it, it is that's the beauty of art. Uh, you, if you buy an artwork, you really uh, derive a lot of enjoyment of living with it, and that gives you a great kick. But of course, at the same time, you have to look at it very coolly as an investment. Mm. And uh, if you look at certain criteria, you can combine uh, acquiring something that brings you a lot of pleasure, but also that turns out to be a very good investment. 
as a bargaining negotiating the price is also one of the enjoyable, very exciting um, experience in the process. For you as well. I mean, when you acquire an artwork, bargaining, mm. or I, I don't like the word bargaining, but <laughs> negotiating, negotiating, negotiating is certainly a part of it, and mm. that's, of course, the thing you do mm. uh, when you when you acquire artworks. You do negotiate, but I am an auctioneer. My profession is an auctioneer, and as an auctioneer, you always try to get the best possible price, the most. The, the, the highest possible price on behalf of the vendor who is selling an artwork. And uh, so th these are two very different things, the negotiation in a private transaction mm. or the selling at auction side. in a public mm. auction. In, most, in your case, you want the price to go up and now you've, you have to try to make the price, to negotiate the price to go down. What are the skills that you can also that can still apply from your experience as an auctioneer? So as an auctioneer, of course, if you give me a painting to sell, yes. I will want to obtain the highest possible price for you. Mm -hmm. And my job as an auctioneer is to get the highest price. So that is very, seer, very principle. simple, only principle. The only principle. Now, if you ask me to buy an artwork for you mm. here at your, Art Basel, and you show me this is a work I want to buy, mm -hmm. um, and you ask me to negotiate on your behalf, I will go and uh, I will first look what prices has similar works sold for at auction and then I will see if the price that is being asked from you is fair mm -hmm. and I will try and explain uh, to the gallerist that if he sells it to you it would be strategically very very important for you to have it and therefore he should really do an effort and give you a discount that will encourage you to come back to the same gallerist and buy more works from him and uh, this is your first acquisition and therefore I will really try and get a very very good price for you. If I am, it's my first purchase and I'm someone totally unknown in the art world, how could that person trust me? I mean, you, of course, it's the, the person who people would trust, but how can I negotiate? You see, when you have uh, an artist that is very successful, mm -hmm. and let's say you have only 35 paintings uh, that are available by this artist. So as a gallerist, you want to sell these artworks in a very strategic way. Yes. You don't want to sell all of them uh, to one collector, first of all. You don't want to sell all of them mm -hmm. to the same geographic region. So you want to sell some to Asia, some to Europe, some to America, some to the Middle East, some to Russia and to create a wide uh, base right at the start. Then you want to sell it to serious collectors. You want to sell it to people who maybe want to build a museum, maybe want to build a foundation. And so you want to see that the collector will have a real commitment to the artist, a long-term commitment. You want to avoid that you buy this work and today you decide, uh, uh, tomorrow you decide to flip it and mm. to sell it on. So the uh, gallerist will try and find out from you what your intentions are, how serious are you about your collecting, and then he will gauge whether he will want to sell it to you. I have to prove my sincerity at the very first place. Uh, that is a good point and uh, if you can demonstrate your sincerity, your integrity, that's a very good start. So maybe that's the first thing and then I have to train to see how I can get the best work that I want with the affordable price that I can offer. Yes, but you know, uh, doing a good collection is not a question of money. I have mm. seen people with very modest financial means build fantastic collection. So it is a question of passion, obsession, mm -hmm. and when you're obsessed, you're also able to find a way of getting a price that works for you. But what if I want to collect in depth on a few or kind of very small group of artists? It's a good thing to try and focus on an area. So if you work out which area you really love personally and uh, uh, decide which is the artist or a group of artists mm -hmm. that you want to focus on, um, you will create a very interesting collection because then you go in depth. It's not just an sampling, it becomes an artwork in itself. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to start collecting first with the galleries and then go to the auction house or people go the other way? You around? should do both. You should follow the art fairs like the Art Basel or other art fairs very closely. Look at everything. Same thing, you should follow all the auction, look at everything. And once you've seen everything, you can start comparing and automatically 
the good things will stick out and these are the ones you should go after. So I have to wait for two or three years to look first and then start buying? I think the first rule is look, look and look. Once you've done that, then you are prepared to do yeah. the next step, which is to buy. And when you've done your first acquisition, the second step will for to follow automatically. automatically. It, it's an addiction oh, and oh. it never leaves you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Not at all. Thank you.